don't know where I'm going, but I'm on my way. Hello everybody, this is Robert Downey Jr. Just wanted to start off with saying that it's an honor to be here. Just kidding, it's Megan. Everyone loves disclaimers. I wanted to jump in here and say that this is my first moto vlog, real moto vlog, where I used a GoPro and I tried to talk to people, um, the people on the internet. But the audio is quite windy at times. I unfortunately forgot to close my helmet vents, but thankfully there's a lot of traffic and I get caught at a lot of lights. So it's pretty good 80% of the video. So I just wanted to thank you in advance for your patience and to stay tuned for next time when I figure my life out. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and enjoy. All right, um, so far so good. I mean, it's cold, but uh, it's not unbearable. I don't think people are expecting to see me out today, but here I am. This is really a test vlog. I've never done this before. This is so weird. I just feel like I'm talking to myself. Not that I wouldn't do that anyways, but not so extensively, you know? I think I'm going to go to the Scartino's Bakery for a little bit of a... Does that guy know I'm talking to myself? He's wondering. <laughs> Honestly, it's really not bad. I've bundled up adequately. So I talked about this on my Instagram. And, oh, oh shit. <laughs> oh God, just another day in the life. All right, that was fun. I'm gonna need you to pretend like you didn't see anything. Okie dokie. Don't remember what I was talking about because I thought I just lost $200. I don't go here a ton a ton, but it occurred to me to do something cute and interesting while I'm testing this out and something that's not too far away in the frigid cold. I don't know what the person's doing. <laughs> All right, sometimes I think people get so sketched out seeing motorcycles and they do stuff that they they really usually wouldn't do and I think that's sometimes the most unsafe thing for us because just because that guy was waiting, I couldn't very well just go and bank on the fact that he wasn't going to hit me. So people kind of sketch out and then you sketch out and then weird stuff can happen. Legit just noticed that salvation place. <laughs> I've lived on this side of town for three years. And I've been coming here since I was in high school and I only just now for the first time noticed that. <laughs> All right, so now we're doing something different. Um, I had my croissant. It was delicious. I loved it. I realize now that I had <laughs> accidentally had my camera in like the narrow view so now we've opened it up a little bit this is a we are troubleshooting in real time baby so cool we'll see if this perspective even looks good i feel like you're probably looking at my back as i was saying earlier <laughs> i am bundled up i was about to say bundled up to the nines i'm dressed to the nines to like the negative nine degrees you know what i mean air temps are about Real feel is 22 degrees Fahrenheit, which is certainly below zero in Celsius. Um, the actual air temperature itself is is about zero degrees Celsius, 32 Fahrenheit. And then when you factor in the fact that for some reason today there's no sun, <laughs> and then if you're in my position, add about 20 to 35 miles per hour winds. <laughs> And uh, it's a pretty good equation to feel cold. <laughs> so I've got three layers of pants on. I've got two pairs of socks. Tank top, Henley, or a thermal, some people call it. And a lightweight sweatshirt, a little thermal vest from a different jacket of mine, and then this vintage North Face ski jacket. I've also got, uh, I've got this like armored shirt that I put on under things and that helps with um, abrasion protection. I thought it'd be cool today to take you guys to the art museum. 
If you don't know, I think a lot of not a lot of people know about Milwaukee, especially since a lot of people who watch me are from all over the world, which is super cool. So I'd love to give you a taste of Milwaukee. I feel like a lot of people know about, you know, New York, LA, Chicago, not a whole lot of the old Midwest representation. I mean, Chicago, but Chicago, come on. So I'm going to show you the art museum. It was designed by, don't remember his first name, Calatrava. And if I'm not mistaken, he also designed the Sydney Opera House in Australia. So I'm sure you'll see the parallels to that as we ride by it. And for sure, I want to switch my camera by the time we get near to there. Today I'm wearing my Bell Qualifier for a couple reasons. Um, I knew it would be a quieter helmet and now wearing it uh, for the first time <laughs> in like a year and a half probably, I am realizing that it is much quieter than the Bell Bullet. So everyone who put me on blast like, it's whatever, you were right. <laughs> but guess what? It doesn't have the look. <laughs> and I'm a, I'm a little hipster, bro. Let me have my vintage accessories, so long as they're safe. But anyways, wear the Bell Qualifier today because it's a little bit of a quieter helmet in terms of the wind flow. I think it's ever so slightly a little bit warmer. I don't remember if it's got one of those little chin screens. Let me see. No, it doesn't, but I could probably put one in and that would help a little bit more. And I could easily tuck a little mic in here. So I think once I get a little mount for right here, this will be this will be the moto vlogging helmet. It's not on brand, but it's not a bad setup. Once I'm rich and famous and I have a million helmets, I'll have maybe a new bell bullet and I'll use my old one as a moto vlogging helmet because I don't know, I don't want to have that mount there all the time. <laughs> I don't want to be sitting there on my regular, 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 regular commute. I'm just a regular, regular, regular girl from the Bronx. And have a little fugly mount for the, for the GoPro. Pretty much in the heart of downtown right now. It's not very sexy over here, but we're nearing um, a very cool area called the Third Ward. That's where there's some like bougie living spaces. There's shopping, there's mid-century modern modern furniture shops. The Milwaukee Public Market is a real hit. It's a really cool spot to get, you know, it's a public market. You can eat there, you can get gifts, you can um, get spices. I highly recommend the Spice House. I want to literally be the person who gets everyone hooked on Milwaukee iron. If you're uh, in the seasonings, <laughs> as I think probably most human beings on this earth like seasoning things, if you're just a straight salt and pepper person, like, you need to wake up, sheeple. Like, there's more to life <laughs> than salt and pepper. Um, I didn't think that existed until, you know, got outside my bubble a little bit, went to university, saw people using exclusively salt and pepper. My parents' house has an insane amount of seasonings from the Spice House and probably a handful from Penzi's, but Spice Houses really are chronic. But there's one seasoning that they do called Milwaukee Iron and I think it was first made for like a Harley anniversary so maybe the 100th or 105th something like that to celebrate the 115th here in Milwaukee if you didn't know now you know Milwaukee is home to the Harley Davidson headquarters and also it's actually right up ahead maybe I'll ride by that'd be kind of cute I'll move the camera around then I'll ride by the Royal Enfield North American headquarters I'm on St. Paul in water right now so I'm a stone's throw away. I can see the mural from here for Royal Enfield. So that's pretty exciting stuff um, right in the backyard of Harley. But point is, Milwaukee Iron, very good seasoning. Highly recommend it. A little spicy, but really not that spicy. It's like white people spicy. All right, my fingertips are cold. So I'm using the, um, the sweaty glove technique. <laughs> I don't think anyone else calls it that other than me. The life hack uh, if you're just a penny-pinching cheapo like me and don't have winter gear even though you live in a cold, cold climate, is to put latex gloves on or just any kind of little rubber glove situation on underneath your regular gloves and it like traps the heating because your fingers can't breathe basically 
um, but right now it's not totally cutting it for me so I'm uh, taking notes <laughs> okay let's see super glad you didn't fall off this time I mean that never happened what are you talking about I never saw it so right now we're in the third ward that's why everything's all cute and bricks and industrial looking it's a very hip and trendy neighborhood these kind of industrial spots are pretty common throughout Milwaukee. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of certain regions of the Midwest being referred to as the Rust Belt, and I think we fall into that with Detroit and some other places, but uh, very industrial. We have a lot of breweries out here, not as many as Colorado though, so I guess we gotta step it up a, one of these days. I know some people who own a brewery, so shout out to Broken Bat. They're down here in the third ward and they're awesome. They're a family friend of ours. So if you're ever in town for a baseball game, <laughs> go to Broken Bat Brewery and then go catch a game. Why not? We're gonna ride past Royal Field. I got a buddy, a couple buddies who <laughs> work there. So I'd love one of these days to do I know that's like illegal to not put your foot down or whatever, but you can just go tell the cops on me. I, don't know what you heard about me. I got a friend who works for Royal Enfield, and, uh, or a couple friends who work for Royal Enfield, so I'd love to do a little test ride again and, and vlog that a little bit for you guys if you've never. It's kind of a unique opportunity to be able to have access to all those Indian bikes um, that are pretty uncommon. I'll do that for you if you're nice to me. Funny thing about Royal Enfield too is there's a speakeasy on the back of this this deli. So here's Royal Enfield, North America, super cool. Let's ride around to the back. I'll show you where the speakeasy goes in. Ooh, we'll do some urban exploring. I love this. Love that for us. James Charles, if you're watching, you have fans in all sorts of niches. Spooky industrial back here. The uh, Royal Enfield I hope I'm not like pronouncing it wrong. <laughs> Royal Enfield, there's no T. Here's uh, their little loading dock uh, where they bring the bikes in. I can see a couple of helmets up there. Is that Jacob's helmet? No, I don't know whose helmet that is. So you got the loading dock back here. And funnily enough, I mean, I don't know if this is like, I don't know if this is not allowed because <laughs> it's secret, top secret. Not really that secret, but here where it says Gouda's Italian Deli. I mean, there is a real deli out front. Um, there's this very awesome looking built out rear, but built out rear, I just said. Look at these people. But this is also the entrance to a speakeasy, so if you're in town, go check out Bugsy Speakeasy. I mean, you can look up the address on the internet, so it's not, not super duper duper secret. And I highly recommend it. It's really funny. It's right by Royal Enfield, so you could have a really amazing weekend test riding Royal Enfields and going to speakeasies and breweries and stuff, so. Honestly, there's a ton to do in Milwaukee. This would be a great neighborhood to get an Airbnb in or whatever, because you're close to uh, the Third Ward, obviously. You're close to the Art Museum, Summerfest Grounds. It's the largest music festival on earth. Man, I'm really plugging Milwaukee well, aren't I? <laughs> but um, this would be a really good spot to stand, but I imagine that the Airbnbs aren't cheap. Lower East Side is probably a bit cheaper, and it's really not far. You can hop on the trolley. We have a trolley now. That's pretty cute. Some people hate it. Some people love it. Yeah, there's a trolley. Okay, I'm about to ride by Summerfest Grounds too. Fuck it. We're gonna show you some cool stuff. Ow, my fingers. This is cute. It's a tour of Milwaukee. I love it. So there's these huge music festival grounds just plopped onto the edge of this area of Milwaukee. I mean, I call it an edge because I think, did they have a stop sign? I'll go. Um, call it an edge because there's like, the lake is over there. Um, this doesn't directly sit on the lake, it sits on like a little lagoon thing, but June 28th, Ozzy Osbourne, lit! Oh my god. <laughs> Wait, that's great. And Megadeth. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. There, it looks like there's gonna be some great shows coming up. So it's this amazing festival grounds. There's ethnic festivals and music festivals all year, or all winter, what am I talking about? All summer long. <laughs> And then we're coming up on the Calatrava. So I was mentioning earlier, it's the Milwaukee Art Museum. It's a very fantastic museum. I'll probably vlog the inside of it one of these days with you guys because it's very, very cool. 
The inside looks like the inside of a whale, or what I imagine would be the inside of a whale. I haven't been in one. Love to try it. It's designed to look like a whale tail, or a lot of people say it looks like a sail. Um, I don't know if there's a consensus on the particular inspiration, but it's a, it's a beautiful architectural feat, and we love it. And it, those wings open and close. So now I'm on like a world drive freezing. Absolutely freezing to death. I think I'm gonna end the vlog here, why not? Um, I had a great time. I mean, I'm suffering, but I had a great time. The croissant was very good. And uh, I'll catch you guys next time. Sayonara. Oh yeah, life hack. Well, not really life hack. Just put your hands on the engine. Ducatis run nice and toasty warm, so it's like riding a space heater, but like the heat is escaping behind you and you never get it unless you're at a stoplight. So 